Wow, you guys are all up in the front, ready for worship. So great. Are you ready for today? Yeah? Do you guys have your sheets? Okay, if you need to get a sheet, it's in the back on the table there. So you could write in some notes from the message if you want or color it while we go through the message together, okay? Okay, let's review last week first. So last week... I know those pictures are small, but we talked about a lesson from history. So the people of Israel, at times they were slaves. They were slaves in Egypt. Later they were captives. They were taken from their homes and taken captive to Babylon. And then later... Jerusalem was colonized by Rome and the Roman army. So they went through all these different hardships at different times. But what was the reason? During all of these times in the midst of problems, hardship, suffering, God chose a remnant Remnants like Joseph and Moses, Elisha, Isaiah, Daniel, Esther, and even Paul. And they were there to help the people and ultimately bring them to God. So that was a part of their remnant journey for world evangelization. And just like those remnants, who here is a remnant? You, you are remnants, and God chose you to save your friends, your family, the people around you, right? Because the remnant always remains. No matter the problems, God saves the remnant, and he chooses them for world evangelization. So what did we learn? God allows problems and bad situations, but within that, God chose you to help people and lead them to Jesus Christ so they can be saved and for world evangelization. Amen? Okay, let's look at today's message. That which must be changed. Okay, the Bible verse, Matthew 4, 19. Follow after me. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. Amen. Actually, I just remembered, the last time we went through this was with Pastor Stella from the Philippines. Do you remember? She came here and she gave a message about being fishers of men. Do you remember? Do you know, Pastor Stella's here today, actually. (laughs) Not here at the worship, but she's at the church. So if you see her, say hello, because I'm sure she'd love to meet you guys. Okay, so for today's message, we're going to look at Jesus gathering the disciples and making disciples of people. And one of the times he does this is on a mountain. So Jesus saw all these crowds, all these people following him. So when he saw that, he went up to a mountain, and he sat down on the mountain, and he began to teach. He gave them a message. We call this message the Sermon on the Mount, because a sermon is the message that pastors give, and they're on the mount or the mountaintop when he gives it. So Jesus gave a very important message during this time. And what we're going to do is we're going to read a little bit of it together. So what did he teach them? He talked about blessings. What are true blessings? He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for
for they will inherit the earth. So Jesus is actually talking about people that are suffering and have different problems, that are crying and are sad, and they're not very proud, but they're humble or weak. Normally, this world says, these people are great, they're the best, because they have power. But Jesus says, no, the really blessed people are even the people that are suffering and going through difficulties. And he continued, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. So people that really want to be good in God's sight, God says, you are truly blessed. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. So you guys see that picture? So he's helping someone that might be sick or having some problem. I think it's like the Good Samaritan Right? He's showing mercy. He doesn't have to help him, but because he has God's love, he helps this person. And God says, because you have that heart to help others, you are blessed by God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So that's like you, remnants. You guys are pure in heart. You're innocent. And God says, you will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are called children of God. Do you guys know what a peacemaker is? When two people are fighting, right? They don't get along. They're fighting. Sometimes you could go and go there and say, oh, don't, don't fight. It's okay. You guys say you're sorry. You guys should be friends, right? That's a peacemaker. They want to make peace between people that are fighting, And sometimes on the big scale, sometimes there's wars between people, right? Peacemakers, they try to make people have peace so they stop fighting. So if you are a person that wants people to get along and not fight, you're a peacemaker. And God says, I bless you because you have a heart of love to bring peace. He says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness for the kingdom of God of heaven belongs to them. So if you're doing good as a Christian, but people are calling you names or hurting you, it says you're actually blessed. Blessed are you when people insult you or persecute you and say all kinds of evil things about you falsely on account of me. So for a lot of Christians and missionaries, sometimes they're given a hard time. People make fun of them or throw rocks at them or do bad things. But Jesus says, you are blessed by God. He says, rejoice and be glad because your reward is great in heaven for they persecuted the prophets before you in the same way. So Jesus is trying to change their thinking. Because you're a Christian, there might be bad things that happen to you. But God loves you and he blesses you and your reward in heaven is very great. So he continues on and he says, you are, do you guys see that? What is that? The world, right? He says, you are the salt of the earth. Do you know what that means? So that's a picture of salt (laughs) that we use. What do we use salt for? When do we use salt? Sometimes the food doesn't taste very good, right? Right? So sometimes we add salt and it tastes better. So it makes things better. Also, if you have something like meat, if meat, after some time, it'll go bad. Bacteria and bad germs get in there. But if there's a lot of salt, it kills all the germs. So it's good for preserving things and making them last for a long time. So he says, just like that, you are the salt of the earth. You will make people happy because you have Christ. You will help people have eternal life because you have Christ. So you're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Because who's inside you? Jesus. And Jesus is shining the light of the gospel from you. So he's saying you are blessed because you are the light of the world. 
So Jesus kept saying a lot of things in the message. He says, don't worry so much, but trust God. Don't seek after the things of the world. Seek after the kingdom of God, and everything will be given to you. You don't have to worry. So Jesus taught many other things. He told them about heaven. He taught them how to pray. He said to help others, to help the poor, to not judge others. And he said even pray for people you don't like, your enemies. Normally we don't like our enemies and people we don't like, but he says pray for them. And he says... Okay, this is very important, guys. Treat others the way you want to be treated. We call that the golden rule. Have you heard that? So if you have people around you, you think, how would I want to be treated? Would I want people to make fun of me? Would I want people to hurt me? No. We think we want people to help us and love us. So that's how we should treat other people. It's called the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated. And at the end of the message, he said, Therefore, everyone who hears these words and puts them into practice is like the man who built his house on the rock. What does that mean? So people told this story for the people listening, so they wouldn't just hear his word, because it goes in our ears, right? We hear messages, we hear many things, but do we use them in our life? That's the most important thing. Do you live following God's word and obeying God's word? So he told this story. Do you see that? That's a house. What is the house built on? It's built on a rock. Anyone who listens to my words and puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against the house. But it didn't fall because it was firmly established on the rock. So that is, if you hear God's word, And you live and obey God's word. But everyone who hears the word and does not put it into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Right? It's not on a rock. It's just on the sand. So what happens? The rain fell. The floods came. The winds blew and beat on the house. And what happened to the house? It collapsed. It was destroyed. So if you don't obey God's word, it's like building a house that will collapse. It's going to be a lot of problems for you later on. So it's very important. Put God's word into practice. Obey God's word and trust in Jesus Christ. So this is a teaching that Jesus gave about how to have a good life, how to please God, and It was these things that they had to change about their thinking. So I'll give you one last example. Okay, this is the world. This is the earth. Okay. In the world, there's a lot of people that have hate, that are evil, that have a lot of pride, that are selfish, that fight a lot. So they're always thinking only of themselves. They think about money and riches and all the things in the world. That's how everyone lives. They want to make a name for themselves. They want to have a lot of popularity. They want to have a lot of money. They don't care if they hurt others or are evil or bad. That's how the world lives. And Jesus said, don't live like that. The world I'm talking about is like this. It's upside down. It says, don't be selfish and prideful, but love others, care for others, take care of others. 
The things that the world says is important are not important. What's most important is your relationship with God and living for God's kingdom. That's what he wants. And that's what Jesus was teaching. This is the kingdom of God, and you are God's children. And this is how I want you to live. Amen? Okay. Today's Bible verse, Matthew 7, 24. Okay, follow after me. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Amen. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today's message. Help us to love others, to care for others, and pray for others, and treat others how we want to be treated. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, remnants. Thank you for listening.